Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I want to do a little setup video similar to the one I did uh, once upon a time for NGC 3359 and 5907. This time I'm going to be going after uh, three Galaxy targets, NGC 2903, M106, and M51. These are pictures I took of those galaxies uh, back in the days when I was using my T2i, and I want to revisit them now that I have a dedicated AstroCam. Now, normally I won't bore you with uh, the setup videos every time I go out and start tackling a, a target. Instead, this time I want to illustrate the use of a piece of equipment I bought that helps me more accurately set up the imaging camera and the off-axis guider. It's this little digital angle gauge, and I found it to be fairly useful, and I wanted to kind of sh share the results with you, so let's get started. All right, the first target I'm going to go after is NGC 2903. I am, we are rapidly losing 2903 for the for this season and over here on the left is a is a plot that I made there's a video way back when about uh, finding imaging targets from my backyard but I did a series of these plots for all of the DSOs that I might want to eventually take a picture of and if we take a look at this what you have on the horizontal axis here is just the months of the year essentially and then we have on the left scale the altitude and on the right hand scale the observation time and the blue curve here goes with the right hand uh, scale, the observation time. And so the optimum time to image 2903 is actually back here in February where 2903 is visible for almost 10 hours a night, which means if you're trying to get about 20 hours of, of imaging data on a target, you could be done with this particular target in February by just having two to three good days. Uh, that's the importance of this kind of a plot. Now it's a shame I went to all the trouble to make these plots and then don't actually pay attention to them when it comes time to actually do the imaging. So now here we are in mid-May-ish and now this target is only visible for maybe three and a half hours. And I've got to hurry and get it done because I'm losing, it's falling off pretty rapidly until eventually it, by the end of of June, I'm going to lose the target altogether and it won't come back in any real sense until uh, maybe November. Uh, now, on the other side of the scale, the green line represents the maximum altitude that the target gets to on that given day. So I can expect the maximum altitude when I start doing the imaging here to be somewhere up in here, about 60 degrees, which is pretty good. And I can watch it all the way down to about 30 degrees. And then the minimum altitude, which includes my local horizon, fences, houses, uh, nearby houses, houses down the street, my house, etc. For the middle of May, that I will be able to see this target down to a fairly low altitude, even though it's much lower than what I would generally be imaging at. I don't like to image too far below 30 degrees. So basically, I'll have access to this target for the uh, range of angles from 30 degrees up to 60 degrees and, and for about three hours a night. Over here on the right hand side is a picture of, of NGC 2903 from Stellarium and I don't know if you can make it out but there's the window that corresponds to the field of view that I have with my ASI 1600 and my uh, C 9.25 Smith Cassegrain. I've got it oriented so that more or less the long axis of the galaxy is parallel to the long axis of the sensor so that's the camera angle and in this case the imaging camera angle is at minus 90 degrees based on Stellarium measurements. I'll show you where these are in just a second. But I also have to plan out, and that's the purpose of this whole thing, is to plan out where to place the off-axis guider so that I'll have a guide star. Now when I'm on the east side of the meridian, the, the orientation of the off-axis guider placed here will be able to see this fairly bright guide star, so that's good. Now, at this time of year, though, I'm not on the east side of the meridian, I'm on the west side of the meridian, and that means that the image that the off-axis guider will have is on this side, and once again, I have a fairly bright guide star, so I can have a pretty good uh, expectation of getting this guide star in view, and the nice thing about this is there's plenty of margin um, around the guide star around to the compared to the edge of the uh, guide camera sensor that I should be able to pick this up without any difficulty. And I think that applies here. I've got enough margin here so it won't fall off the, uh, the bottom of the sensor. So that's good. Uh, so that's one thing that I like to check on when I'm setting up a camera. First of all, framing the target 
Second thing is picking an orientation of the off-axis guider so that I, when I'm imaging it on the east side of the meridian, I can see a guide star, and without having to move the off-axis guider and I do a meridian flip, I can see it on the west side of the meridian as well. So that's a good thing. Now, that's just imaging a target for three hours. I need additional targets in order to to uh, round out a full night of imaging. But first of all, let's go over to look at the Stellarium settings where these numbers are coming from. All right, so this is in the Oculars settings sensor tab. And under the, uh, the camera, the sensor, there is a rotation angle in degrees. And I've typed in minus 90 degrees. That's the minus 90 degrees for the imaging camera. And then down below here is the off-axis guider section. If you're not using an off-axis guider, you just check that off and it doesn't show you anything uh, no, there doesn't show any graphic elements related to the off-axis guider. In my case, obviously, and the main reason for using Stellarium is that it has this really cool feature of being able to show where the off-axis guider is and what its field of view is. And so I've got it checked, and the, off, the position angle for the off-axis guider is 140 degrees, which is why I'm saying off-axis guider is at 140 degrees here. All right, so we have the imaging camera and the off-axis guider set up for NGC 2903. Now we've got to confirm that those same settings will work equally well with M51 and M106. Well, here's M51. Now, M51, going back over to this plot, I've got a bit more time. It's NGC that's getting close, to, NGC 2903 that's getting close to, to exiting uh, stage left for the uh, for the season, but I've got a bit more time with M51, which means here in mid-May-ish, I'll have more than uh, eight hours of observation time. Now, the first three hours are going to be dedicated to 2903, which will leave me five to six hours after that for M51. Okay, what that also means is that I will finish collecting adequate data for M51 before I'm even halfway done collecting data on NGC 2903, which is why I need yet a third target to pick up and start imaging uh, once I'm done with M51. But let's go back over to the Stellarium view for M51. This is the same orientation of the, of the imaging camera, minus 90 degrees, the same orientation of the guide camera. And you can see here that at the long axis of the galaxy pair for M51 is parallel to the, more or less parallel to the long axis of the sensor. And for the off-axis guider at plus 140 degrees, I've got a nice guide star here. I may accidentally be able to see this one depending on how pre precise we are in placing the off-axis guider actually on the telescope. But certainly I've got one that's very, uh, a guide star here that's quite visible. And on the west side of the meridian, I'll have uh, this star. So I should be good to go with the same camera settings I'm using for 2903. I will be able to also properly frame M51 and see at least one good guide star on the east side of the meridian and on the west side of the meridian. So that's good news. I need a third target because I'm going to finish M51 or collect enough data on M51 uh, about the time I'm only halfway through with NGC 2903. And I selected M106 for that. Now, in this case, uh, it's very close to M51, so the imaging time is, is similar. I will have, once I finish M51, or maybe I'll start with M106, once I finish M51, I can switch to M106 or vice versa. And I have plenty of, of time left in this year to, to capture it, assuming I get a catch a break with some of the weather around here. Now, in this case, I'm actually shifting the target off the center of the M106 coordinates so that I can pick up this little galaxy here within the field of view. So in that case, I've shifted the galaxy up to pick up this little guy. But once again, you can see that a camera orientation of minus 90 degrees uh, gives me a comfortable fit of M106 and this little galaxy here. Also, the off-axis guider orientation at 140 gives me one guide star on the east side of the meridian and one nice bright guide star on the west side of the meridian. But th this is kind of an iterative process where you have to, first of all, put it, pick a target, put in a camera orientation and off-axis guider orientation that seem like they'll work, and then go check the next target and you might have to adjust the angles a bit and then you go to in this case the third target and you might have to make yet another adjustment to make sure you have uh, the guide stars in a guide star in the field of view for each of the three targets so it's kind of an iterative process but i am uh, happy that i'm able to come up with a single orientation for the imaging camera and the off-axis guider that will handle all three of these 
fairly large uh, galaxies that I'll be uh, trying to tackle here in the next coming weeks, I assume. We know the angles from Stellarium, the minus 90 degrees and the plus 140 degrees for the off-axis guider. Now what we have to do is to implement this and transfer these measurements and angles onto the actual hardware uh, so that when we take the scope outside, it's set up and ready to see these uh, guide stars and targets. Looking at the back of the SCT, and I have kind of a cartoon picture of my ASI 1600. The writing is actually parallel to the long direction of the sensor. And then I have kind of a cartoon of the off-axis guider. This orientation as the SCT is sitting on its rail on a level surface is the zero degrees for imaging camera and zero degrees for the off-axis guider orientation. So this is our starting point. So now the first step is to rotate both the camera and the off-axis guider, in this case in a minus 90 degree direction, which means 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. So both the camera and the off-axis guider are being rotated together in this first step. In the second step, we then leave the camera where it is and rotate the off-axis guider 140 degrees in the positive direction. So this is the orientation that we're ultimately after. And if we look at this, we have a, the off-axis guider is about, the axis of the off-axis guider is about 50 degrees off of the horizontal. The writing on the back of the ASI 1600 is zero degrees relative to the horizontal. So now we need to take the camera and the off-axis guider and ensure that when we put them on the back of the telescope we have these angles reproduced. So here's the back of the of the SCT with the ASI 1600 and what we wanted is a the writing of the ASI 1600 parallel to the ground so that's at zero degrees and we wanted the axis of the off-axis guider to be 50 degrees off the horizontal and this is where I use this Wixie digital angle gauge. Got it off of Amazon for probably about $27. It's really handy. I was using my cell phone. It's uh, That's a bit more cumbersome to use and probably not as accurate. This one boasts that it has a an accuracy of 0.1 degrees, which is, is fine. And it's got some ni nice flat edges that you can put up against surfaces to to uh, make sure you're, you're measuring the right angle. Let me show you a little video where I use this little device and confirmed these uh, these settings here. Okay, I think I've got the off-axis guider and the camera imaging camera set up with the proper orientation based on what we learned from our Stellarium pl planning session. I use the digital angle gauge to make these measurements and I just want to show you guys how the angle gauge works and it seems to be fairly accurate and I'm pretty pleased with it so let's start off with that. I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to do a reset to uh, calibrate it to zero angle based on where it's sitting here on the table. So this is level, presumably, and we'll set that to zero. So I'm going to turn it on, and we're going to zero it out. And based on the measurements from Solarium, we, what we want here, I'm going to set the flat surface of the uh, digital angle gauge on the flat, more or less, of this USB connector. And that should read zero. So it should be pretty close to the zero reading you're seeing now on the table. And then I'm going to rotate it down. And this should read 50 degrees down when I put the flat, the vertical flat edge of the angle gauge up against the surface here. So let's look at that. All right, so for the camera, it's about uh, one degree, a half a degree something within a degree, which is not that bad, all right? And now let's put it up against the flat of the back of the imaging camera, and you can see that that's reading about 50 degrees, almost exactly, plus or minus 0.1 degrees. So this is exactly what we're looking for from our Stellarium setup, and we should be good to go. I should expect to see the guide stars and the framing of the individual target should be as predicted in Stellarium. Well, there you have it, guys. With some luck, we'll have galaxies and we'll have guide stars. Now, if we can get some clear skies, which we should be having here in the next week or so, I should be able to get some decent pictures of these three galaxies. I hope you found it useful, and we'll check in with you later.